This happened almost four years ago. My parents and my husband were visiting my mom's family in Indianapolis. I used to go all the time as a child, but I wouldn't know my way around. I was drinking a lot because my husband had an emotional affair with his ex that lasted four months. She tried to break us up, essentially. Honestly, I could write a whole post about how she tried to ruin our relationship. So we saw my family and then went back to the hotel. I was upset, so I said that I was just going to go smoke. In reality, I was going to the hotel bar. I got multiple double vodka shots with a splash of orange juice, and I was feeling good. The bar was closing, so I asked the bartender where there was another bar, and she told me to go to TGIF's. It was a 10-minute walk. Remember, this was after 10 p.m., so I was already drunk. I went inside and got more drinks. I don't remember how I got outside, but I was smoking and there were people outside in the parking lot with me. Suddenly, I was being dragged into a car. I don't know how long it had been. I was so drunk I couldn't do anything or even realize how screwed I was. During this time, my husband realized that I was missing and woke up my mom in my parents' room. He tracked my phone to the TGIF parking lot. My mom and husband got to my phone, but I wasn't there. Then my mom saw this man trying to get me in his car. She got out of the Uber they were in and started screaming to let me go. And this monster thought my mom was just some stranger trying to save me. He didn't believe her and I remember the yelling. I only remember him saying, How do I know she's your daughter? Something like that. He had grabbed me so hard that I had bruises and my mom threatened to call 911, which I was told later, since I was almost in his car. He let go of me and drove off with his back passenger door open. I am convinced that I would have been violated at the very least. I was unfamiliar with the area, I was drunk, and I was barely realizing how bad the situation was. I was taken to the hospital and catheterized. I was also strapped down, and I was released the next day. I didn't hear about what my mom and my husband saw until we got home since we were driving home that day. To the creep who tried to take me while I was drunk, let's never meet again. No one with good intentions just grabs a girl. Plus, I don't know if I dropped my phone or if the guy did. This happened years ago, but the thought of it still keeps me up at night. I was walking through hills of a provincial park with my dog during winter, so the sun set much faster than I expected and before I could get back to my car. Once the sun was gone and all you could see was darkness, I was walking slowly through a field when, out of nowhere, I had, to this day, the most gut-wrenching, undeniable feeling I was being watched. I turned around and in the distance... I saw a figure standing there, darker than the night sky around us. The instant I saw him, my stomach dropped and my body literally froze. I knew in that moment somehow he was coming for me. I grabbed my dog's leash and we book it. I mean sprinting, full bore, up and down hills, around trees, down embankments. I was running so fast as if my life was dependent on it, and to this day I'm sure it was. I make the 30 to 45 minute trip in 10 and all that stands before me in my car is this switchback you have to go back and forth up if you want to reach the top. So once again, I'm giving it all I got, running up the switchback as fast as I possibly can and once I reach the top and look back down, who else but this person chasing me? And he doesn't go up the switchback like how any sane person would, of course not. He starts sprinting right up the middle of the switchback, headed straight for me. I scream at him to screw off and he doesn't say anything, not a single word, just continues running right at me. I'm so lucky my car was at the top of that hill because as I ran towards it, just like in the horror movies, I dropped my keys and fiddling with them trying to open the door. Just in time, I get the door open throw my dog in and shut the door behind me just as this guy reaches us. Best part is, there were no other vehicles parked anywhere around us, but where did this person park? Yeah, right next to me of all places. Now this guy literally jumps into his truck so fast and to this day I've never seen a better example of speeds out of there like a bat out of hell. He guns the engine so hard, black smoke is blasting out of the back as he swerves out of there, leaving skid marks behind him. 
I sat in the back of my vehicle for hours afterwards, just shaking and crying. I know I was this close to whatever he had planned for me. And that's why I'm sharing this story, in hopes that people won't ignore that gut feeling, the little voice in the back of your head that tells you to run. If I did that day, I never would have noticed him in time, and would not have had the head start that I needed to escape. Always trust your gut feelings and intuition. It might really be the deciding factor if this is your final day on earth or not. This happened probably five or six years ago, and I think I was 18 at the time. For starters, I lived in a city where neighborhoods and forests kind of blend together. There are plenty of wooded areas where people go to have bonfires and parties. One night, after discovering that all of our usual spots were crowded with people, I suggested that we go to a spot that I had been to a few times nearby. I had been there multiple times, but only during the day. The street where we park is maybe 200 feet from the tree line. It's your average, middle-class neighborhood, and nothing crazy is really known to happen there. So, we walk in, start a bonfire, and we're all having a good time. Some of us are drinking and smoking a bit, myself included. About 45 minutes pass, and I'm a little intoxicated, but nothing major. And over the sound of our quiet music and friends talking, I hear something odd. I can't make out what it is, so I figured maybe I'm just hearing things. Maybe another 10 minutes go by and I hear it again, a little better this time. It still sounds relatively far away, but it sounds like Velcro tearing. I stop and just kind of sit there trying to listen while my friends carry away laughing and talking. They didn't seem to notice, and that's when I heard a sound that I was very familiar with. A zapping noise, like one you might hear from a taser. Very brief, but very unmistakable. My stomach drops, and I started looking around a little frantically. My girlfriend at the time was the first to notice my distress. She asked me what's wrong, and I explained, and she immediately starts worrying. She gets my friends to quiet down, and we all just sit there and listen for a bit. And then we all hear it. An electric zap. Brief again, but we all know that sound. We all start panicking a bit and we quickly put out the fire while asking each other what in God's name that was or where exactly it was coming from. We're all scared to walk out, it's only maybe a five minute walk to the street but it's dark. We all muster the courage to finally walk the path out and we don't run into anyone. We finally get to the street and start walking to our cars, nervously laughing and relishing being under street lamps again. I see him first. He's walking towards us, not at us, just walking in the direction we just came from. Slightly to the right of us, and he's holding a stick of some sort. It scared me at first, but for a brief second I calmed myself, and it was a pretty safe neighborhood that I knew really well, and it was really common to see people out walking at night. But then I noticed that he's looking right at us, and that stare is burned into my mind. We pass each other. My friends and I are all silent as we're having this stare down with this random man, and that's when it happens. He doesn't break eye contact, holds up the pole and smiles this creepy smile. His eyes are open so wide and the end of the stick lights up bright and that same zapping sound happens again, much louder this time. He's holding a cattle prod. We live in a city, no farmland nearby and no reason to have a cattle prod. My friends and I are just silently soiling ourselves. And suddenly, we just make a break for it and start running. We look back and he's just standing there. The electrical sound of the zapper still going, we can see it brightly shine. And as we start to create some distance, I look back and I just see his silhouette go into the woods without a flashlight or anything. We all just got into our cars and just peeled out of there, and we never went back to that spot. So this happened almost 20 years ago, when I was a young 15-year-old girl. I had an older neighbor who taught drums and was a friend of my family's, and 
I would take drum lessons from him once a week. He only lived like two and a half blocks away, so I would always walk and he and his family lived at the end of a cul-de-sac. Well, one summery day when I was walking home at like 4 p.m., broad daylight in a quiet neighborhood, there was a strange man standing across from the end of the cul-de-sac. He had on a big cowboy hat, which was odd for my area, and some facial hair. I don't know, he was maybe in his 30s perhaps, and he was just staring at me. He was watching me unabashedly as I walked down the cul-de-sac and across the street, and once my back was to him, I could hear that he began following me. My heart sped up. My drumsticks seemed like weak protection and I was wearing these little thin flip-flops and I remember thinking that if I had to kick him, they weren't going to help me at all. Less than half a block away from me was a more busy street and I remember thinking that I could just get to the street where people would see and he'd be sure to back off. But his steps sounded closer and I could taste my panic knowing that I wasn't going to make it. I ended up running up a house where I kind of knew the family and I knew a mom with young kids was probably there and pounded on the door, tried to open it myself even in my panic. She opened it and I spilled into her house and locked the door, told her what had happened and let my heart calm down a little bit. After being inside for like 15 minutes I asked if I could just hop her back fence to go home and since it would cut out a block of travel but when we slid back the drapes of her back door, the dude was leaning against the fence right outside her house where he could see both the front and back door. She ended up loading her kids in the car and driving me home and later had her husband ask around. It turned out the dude was living with his mother and had just gotten out of jail. I don't know what the charges were specifically. All I know was that my stomach had been twisted into knots and it was the first time I'd tasted true fear like that. I don't know what would have happened if he caught me. This took place a couple of years ago in Hollywood, Florida. I was in the middle of school at the time. Myself, my sister, my mom, both were on our front porch unlocking the door after coming home from school. We noticed something was off right away because our alarm didn't go off and mom always made it a point to set the alarm before we leave the house. Although that was weird, we also noticed and commented about it. It was very possible that we just forgot to set it. Because of that possibility, we just ignored it and moved on. As we entered the house and were beginning to set our backpacks and other stuff down, I heard a drawer close in my bedroom. I thought I was just hearing things, so I looked at my mom and was about to ask her if she heard something. My mom looked at me at the same time and her look of horror was enough for me to realize that she had heard the same thing. My sister didn't seem to notice because she had her earphones in. That sound and the fact that the alarm was off was enough for my mom to decide to just get us out of there. She loudly said, I want to show you guys something in the backyard. Because she didn't want anyone in the house to know that we had heard them and that's why we were leaving the house. My sister looked confused, but I knew exactly why my mom said this. As we entered the backyard and shut the door behind us, we speed walked towards the alley behind her house. The only thing that separated us from it was a wooden fence, and once we reached the fence, we opened the gate and began to exit into the alley. I was the last to exit through the gate, and before I shut the gate, I looked at the house one last time. To my horror, I saw someone looking at me through our curtains. We called the police and they found no one and nothing was stolen. When I was in high school I discovered a stolen car which I reported to the police and it could have led to something worse. Every day when I got home from the school I would head upstairs and use the bathroom up there since my room was up there as well. Being on the second floor, I never had a shade or curtain on this bathroom window. It was a routine I would just do without giving it much thought. I would go up, do my business, and glance out the window. And from the window, I could see the backyard and over our fence to a parking lot of some nearby apartments. One day, when I happened to glance out the window, I noticed a car sitting at the far end of the parking lot with the driver's side window down. 
This was odd to me as it had just snowed heavily the night before and the snow covered the car completely except for the open window. I laughed to myself thinking that maybe it was just an older car and the window was either broken or didn't work or someone who parked it there might have been drunk and forgot to roll it up. Many thoughts went through my mind about all the possible reasons it would be wide open like that during the middle of winter. I eventually put it out of my mind. After several days I noticed the car had not moved and the window was still open. I sensed something was off and had the idea that the car had been stolen and just dumped there. Deciding to be a good Samaritan, I wrote down the make, model, and license plate number and I brought it to my high school police liaison officer. The office of the liaison officer was nothing more than a custodian's closet with a window door. The window had been covered in black construction paper for the privacy of the students or staff that needed to discuss matters with the officer. When I brought the information about the car to him, I remembered having to wait as he was in some meeting with a student at the time and didn't answer my knocks. I had to go to class, so I handed the information off to a friend who said they could get it to the officer later. Later that day, I was called to the foyer and was met by the liaison officer and a uniform officer. It turned out the car was reported stolen, and the uniformed officer was there so I could go with him to show him where the car was. I was excused from school and rode with the officer to my neighborhood and showed him the car. After filling out my information with the officer, I was then brought back to school by the police liaison officer who met up with us later, and this is when things could have gone bad for me. For some background context, I will tell you that I always had some suspicions about this liaison officer. Well, before I brought the stolen car information in, I witnessed the school's officer overly friendly with students, and many liked him and joked around with him. He would say things like, if you went camping and you just woke up with your butt hurting, would you tell anyone? At this, and other so-called jokes, students who really liked him would just laugh it off like he was just one of the guys joking around and having a good time even if the jokes were clearly inappropriate. I just felt that there was something off about him. Since many students liked him and seemed to vouch for him, I just shrugged this off. So, what do you got planned this weekend? He asked me when driving me back to the school. I remember being nervous as I'm usually a shy person and I gave him a serious but ridiculous answer. I told him I was getting an oil change done on my car. He laughed at this and said that I must have more fun things planned other than that. I laughed too but didn't really have any plans that weekend and didn't want to elaborate. He then offered to buy me lunch from a fast food place, a block away from school many high schoolers like the flock to when they have off-campus lunch. At the time, I thought that it was maybe some kind of reward for finding the stolen car and reporting it. I think he was trying to groom me with the offer of food and being friendly that day. Several months after reporting the car, news broke out that the liaison officer had been caught abusing a couple of male students on campus. Word had gotten out that he paid the students to do certain acts and that there were VHS tapes involved. I heard that he had tried to hand over the evidence to his brother to destroy, but his brother looked at one of the tapes and immediately turned him over to the authorities. Regardless of the facts, he was found guilty on several counts and sentenced to prison. My instincts of being suspicious of him were right. And thinking back on the car ride to school with him, I can't help but think that he could have done something to me. What if he did try something and I refused? Would he have threatened to arrest me for something? blame the stolen car on me, force me to do something at gunpoint. The black construction paper over the window of his office door might have been put up to hide the criminal acts happening on the other side. In any case, I'm glad that nothing happened to me. I feel bad for the students who were abused and hope that they are doing okay these days, but this goes to show you that sometimes you never really know a person and sometimes people that are supposed to protect you are not as they seem. This happened about five years ago. I was around 16 to 17 years old, and I always enjoyed walking. I would spend at least one hour a day walking the roads around where I lived. One day I was out, doing my normal route, walking down my street that my house was on, taking a ride out to the main street and following it until I got to the end. There I would cross the crosswalk and retrace my steps to go home. 
On this particular day, I was about 20 feet from where I would leave the main road on my journey back home. I had my headphones in, blasting music as always, which can be a bad habit as I am a young female that has been put in some sketchy situations while going out for walks, men chasing me, following me, etc., but since it was daylight and the roads were pretty busy, I figured I was safe. But man, I was ever off with that assumption. As I was about to pass the entrance of a side street before leaving this main road, a black Ford F-150 pulled up, and he stopped and gestures for me to walk in front of him, so I do so. I was about to go on my merry way when I barely heard someone trying to talk to me. I turned down my music, taking out my headphones as I looked to see the man in the black Ford, still stopped at the entrance of the side road. I looked at him puzzled, trying to figure out if he was talking to me. I pointed at myself and he grinned, nodding. What's a beautiful girl like you doing out here? He asked. I laughed awkwardly. Uh, walking? I replied, seeing as the answer should have been obvious. It's a beautiful day for that, he commented, just seeming to make small talk. Yeah, I stated before going to turn around and continue my route home. Wait, wait, wait. The man called. I stopped and turned around, just trying to be polite, even though the encounter was odd. I didn't see too many red flags yet. The man then went off saying things such as, You're so beautiful. You know, you got a really nice body. This hot weather is nice for a hot girl. I grew incredibly uncomfortable at this point, seeing as this man had to be in his mid-forties. He had a bit of a receding hairline with black hair, a nose with a protruding bridge, blue eyes that were surrounded by slight wrinkles and was dressed in a dress shirt. So I instantly brought up my age saying, I'm a minor. There has been multiple times that I've been mistaken for being older than I was and I was hoping saying this would get this fully grown adult man to back off. But he didn't. Oh, that's okay. Come on sweetheart, get in the truck. And that's when I started panicking. Red flags shooting up everywhere. Stranger danger. I just laughed nervously, looking at the cars around me to see if anyone was noticing what was happening. But nobody did. No, that, that's fine. My house isn't far. No, really. Get in the truck. I'll bring you home. No. Come on. Just get in here with me. He called as I turned and started walking away. I was hoping he'd just drive off somewhere else, but he didn't. Instead, he drove extremely slow following me, complimenting me and trying to pressure me into his truck. I thought fast of multiple options for different scenarios, but I chose on a simple one. I pulled out my phone. While still talking, I lifted it up to my ear, pretending to loudly answer a call. Hey, Dad. Yeah, no, I'm just... I'm on street here, so I'll, uh, I'll be home in ten minutes. I stopped pretending to listen to a reply. Uh, okay. You're outside waiting for me? Awesome. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we can do that when I get back. Alright, love you. After he heard me say that, he just took off, tires screeching and all. I ran back home and made it back within about six minutes, actually calling my dad on the way, who had made a call to the police, who showed up shortly after and took my statement and description. It turns out that there was a man on the loose in my area who was exposing himself to kids and trying to pick them up for who knows what. But they never actually found out who exactly it was. This happened years ago when I was around 19 or 20 and worked retail part-time at the mall. I was the closing shift that night and left at around 10.30pm to head home. I often took the inside streets versus the freeway, which included a small stretch of back road that was usually pretty empty, especially during that time of night. Now this particular night, I noticed a car about 10 minutes into my 30 minute drive going the same way as me, but I really didn't think much of it. As we're approaching the stretch of back road that's usually deserted at that time, the driver behind me starts flashing their high beams and slowing down and speeding up while tailgating me. I remember feeling panic that they might hit my car. Eventually the car pulls up beside me and now I can see a middle-aged man who was pointing towards the back of my car and then motioning me to roll down my window. 
I roll my window down about halfway and he says something about how my tire looks like it's flattening and it's going to damage the rim if I don't pull over soon. I tell him I don't know how to change a tire but I'm not too far from home so I should be fine but he's pretty insistent about how it'll only take a few minutes and he is happy to help. I know something is off because my car seems to be driving fine. I just politely say that I'm fine but thanks anyway and roll up my window. He drives next to me for what feels like forever but it couldn't have been more than maybe a minute or so. At this point something feels so off that I'm afraid to even physically look in his direction. I focus on the road the best I can and eventually he slows down and moves behind me again. After a few minutes we reach a more populated well lit part of town and I see him make a U-turn. I get home and take a look and my tire is perfectly fine. I have no idea if he followed me from the mall or what that man's intentions were but I think it's safe to say that they weren't anything good. I even had my dad check all my tires the next morning and the tire pressure on them was in the normal range. I still think of this night from time to time and it makes me nauseous to think about how different things might be today if I had decided to pull over that night. I, a 21-year-old male and my girlfriend, a 20-year-old female, rented an apartment for a month. The area was secluded and after dark, everybody would mind their own business. Neighbors would hardly talk to each other or even be outside in the evening. Our apartment was in a building with four floors and each floor had a single apartment. All the apartments were very compact and built to be rented to students. The night we moved in, our taps ran out of water, so I went upstairs hoping to borrow some from the people living upstairs. I realized that two out of the four apartments were vacant and locked. The apartment on the fourth floor was lit from the inside, so I decided to ring the bell, but to my disappointment, nobody answered. Over the next week, we used to hear the sound of someone whacking a rod or some sort of metal on maybe the floor or some other object. This would start late at night after 1.30 a.m. and continue for hours. Initially, we didn't care about it, but after some time, it just got us intrigued. The sound was clearly from one of the apartments above us, but as I already mentioned, two of the three were vacant for sure, and the third one seemed vacant but was lit from the inside. I knocked on its door many times, but no one answered. The whacking sound was a daily occurrence, and on some very late nights, we would hear someone climbing in the building stairs. It seemed as if though we were the only ones living in this building, especially during the day, and until the very late nights. We made up theories to convince ourselves that it was nothing, but the pattern of the whacking was too irregular for it to be made by wind or something other than a person. It would start at almost daily at around the same time. We asked people around but didn't get any satisfactory answer. No one knew if anyone lived there. Toward the end of our stay, I saw a shady looking man going upstairs during the day. I asked him if he was the owner of the apartments upstairs and he said he was, also including the one on the fourth floor. I asked him if anyone lived upstairs and also about the whacking sound. He told me no one did and that he's looking for tenants. He said that he had no idea about the sound. To my surprise, he then asked me, So, how long are you going to stay here? Four more days or so, uh, we'll, we leave on the 30th of this month, I replied. He asked me if anyone else had rented the place for the next month and I told him that I didn't know. So the strangest part is that for the next four days, there was neither the whacking sound nor the sound of someone climbing up the stairs late at night. However, my girlfriend's internship got extended by two days and we decided to stay there and just as I had anticipated, the whacking sound resumed after the 30th, the day that we were supposed to leave. I don't know what it was, I won't ever know, but I'm just happy that we got out of that place without any consequences. It really scared me sometimes and feels weird thinking about it, even now. So this happened maybe around March 2021, I was 15 and my sister was 17. My sister wanted to take some shrooms because it was uh, nice and sunny out and I decided to tag along and just hang out with her. Me and my sister went across the street because it was like a 
big grass trail that leads into another yard, plus our family members can see us from the windows. We live in a two-story. The left side of our house, there is an actual alleyway that's made of gravel. We're just having a regular conversation, talking about random stuff, and my sister is sitting in front of me, which means my back is facing my house. All of a sudden, I see a man who is just standing and staring at me. Mind you, he's like 30 to 45 feet away from us, so the chance of seeing us from there is low because the grass is pretty overgrown. You'd have to really look and walk back and forth. I'm watching him, and he's just walking towards us. It freaked me out the way he noticed me. I had seen him walking and looking forward like any other regular person on a walk, but he randomly stopped. He stopped, and he looked right at me, bruh. Like, how? I look at my sister, and I'm like, hey... We gotta go, like, right now. She was so confused because she was obviously tripping. I said that there's a man who's coming over and we gotta go now. He starts hiding behind a car that belongs to a neighbor. It's right in front of the tall grass. I could see his dirty, dusty boots, so I knew for sure that he wanted to do something. So now, at this point, he's on the grass and we're already getting into our gate. We just ran upstairs into my aunt's room because there's a window on the left side of the house. We watched him walk down the alleyway and I noticed that he had something in his hand. And as we began to look closer, we could see that it was a knife. He then turned around and walked towards the direction he came from and we never saw that guy again. But I always wondered what could have happened. And I'm thanking God that I trusted my intuition. Click the join button to become a member today for exclusive content. So, this happened quite a long time ago when I was just 20 years old. At the time, I was living alone in an apartment in a notorious building near the center of my city. It was a Saturday night and I had been going out with friends and my now partner. Because it was past 4am already, he and his friend drove me and my close friend back to my building. She lived near me, so she only had to walk about a minute home, but it was difficult to get to by car. We'd said our goodbyes, and my friend started walking towards her place while his friend stayed in the car. We made out for a few minutes until some guy started hollering from one of the balconies in my building. I felt a bit embarrassed by being publicly shamed like that, so for me, that was the cue to say goodbye and go inside. I walked to the entrance, and as I entered the building, a guy walked down the stairs. I didn't think much of it, so I pressed the button for the elevator simply because I didn't feel like taking the stairs to the sixth floor where I lived. The man, maybe a few years older than me, asked if I had a cigarette. I told him no sorry, to keep it short and simple. He just nodded, kept staring at me, and stood next to me waiting on the elevator. I felt creeped out by this, but decided to still wait for the elevator and just get home as fast as possible. At this point, I naively thought maybe he would just leave once the elevator arrived. However, he didn't. Once the elevator doors opened, he stepped in and just waited for me. I got inside the elevator and noticed he didn't press any button. I got a weird gut feeling, so I excused myself and told him I needed to call my friend. He grabbed my arm and tried to pull me back inside the elevator, saying, No, no, come here. I told him louder, Let go. I really need to make this call. I pulled my arm hard to free myself. I almost ran outside, but I didn't know where to go. I was afraid to go back inside, but it was so late, and I didn't feel safe outside either. I just started walking away from my complex and called my friend. She asked where I was so she could come to me, but her phone died before I could answer. I didn't know my partner well back then, so I felt really uncomfortable and also embarrassed to reach out to him, but I did anyways. The need to get somewhere safe was bigger than my embarrassment and I didn't know anyone else who would still be up at this time. I texted him and once he got to know what was going on, he and his friend came racing towards me. They were there within five minutes, parked the car and escorted me back home. By the time we got to the building, the guy was nowhere to be found anymore. They still decided to escort me back to my apartment and stayed with me for a while until the sun came up and I felt comfortable enough to go to sleep. I had three locks on my doors, so as soon as I left, I locked myself in and went to bed. I reported it to my landlord, but he couldn't help me since the security cameras often didn't work and happened to be offline that evening. 
I told him about the guys on the balcony as well because I didn't know if he was one of them and therefore saw me going back alone, but the landlord told me no one with that description lived on that side of the floor. Looking back, I'm so grateful for trusting my gut instinct and just getting out of there. I don't know if he would have done anything, but it was a weird situation regardless and it could have ended very badly. This happened about five years ago when I was attending college in a small rural town. I, a female, was 21 at the time and I lived in a duplex with two roommates in the neighborhood. We had two houses on either side of us and we never really saw our neighbors much or talked to them. Until, it was maybe 3 or 4 a.m., I was just getting home from my boyfriend's house. I pull into the driveway and start walking up to my door when I hear, Help me! Please help me! At first, I was so startled that I bolted towards my door, but then I realized someone might actually need help. So I slowly walked back out front and noticed an older woman laying in my neighbor's yard. She calls out to me again. Please help me. I think I broke my hip. I fell off my porch. I walk over to her and ask if I can call an ambulance, and she says, No, no. Can you please go inside and get Dr. Jones? I don't remember the exact name she said, but I do remember her saying Dr. Something. I'm going to preface this by saying I know my next actions were not smart, but I wasn't thinking clearly at the time. So I walk inside the house and start calling out for this Dr. Jones. While inside, I notice an open bedroom door with a light on and a mattress on the floor, which I assumed was the woman's room. I walk further back into the house calling out for this Dr. Jones and... This guy eventually comes out of a back bedroom. He looks just as startled as I was. I tell him the situation and he follows me outside and he helps her up. They thank me and I go back inside my house. The rest of the time I've lived there I never saw either of those people again and it's still one of the weirdest things that's ever happened to me. I met a guy in college and ran one lap with him. He asked my name and I told him. He was hitting on me but I said no. Anyways, I was going through my emails a day later and he sent me a schedule of when we will run together. I was shocked because to find my email in the college email system, he had to have gone through everyone who has my first name in the system. He would watch me so intensely whenever I ran or shot basketballs at the rec center. It was so intense because people actually noticed and told me. He would hide behind equipment and stare. That part was a little funny to me at least. His hiding was terrible. And he kept hitting on me in person and wouldn't take no for an answer. He grabbed me by the arm forcefully on one occasion and another and said that he was my boyfriend. Obviously he wasn't. It's funny because I told my best friend and she didn't think anything of it. But one day, my best friend, we went to the same college, texts me and says come to the dining hall. I did. There was another girl. And I found out this guy had a restraining order placed against him by the entire girls' soccer team. The restraining order was because he would use the same tactics against them. There is more that have happened, but honestly, I'll just stop there. Just a quick backstory. I grew up in Providence, Rhode Island, and everyone who's lived there knows it's very busy and noisy all day. The rip of buses, traffic, businesses everywhere, but at night it gets very quiet and very eerie sometimes. This story is about an incident that happened to me when I was 15 and got my first job at McDonald's. This gives me chills every time I think about it. I was 15 and just got hired at McDonald's down the street from where I live. It was perfect because I could get to and from work without worrying about getting a ride from my parents. While working there, I met some kids my age that I became close with. Unfortunately, they weren't the greatest of kids, they were very rebellious, and they would clown around at work, act disrespectful towards customers, and they were your typical 90s punks. I slowly started to become like them. I began disrespecting my parents, which was totally not like me but I was always the nerd that didn't have many friends, so I just wanted to fit in. 
Now, side note, I was very sheltered growing up and didn't really get around much because my parents were very overprotective of me. One night at around 10pm I finished watching Monday Night Raw and went downstairs to grab something to eat. I opened the fridge and heard my dad's footsteps. He wore those slippers that sort of tap loudly on the floor. Chris, I've asked you all day to take out the trash. They come tomorrow, so just do it now. Now normally I would have taken it out the first time he asked me, but now that I was getting older and becoming, you know, sort of a smart aleck, I didn't think that it should be my responsibility anymore. I work now and I go to school. You take it out. I replied. My dad's eyes got wider as I've never spoke to him this way before and he leaned in and said softly, As long as you live here, you will help out. Now take out the trash or leave. I called his bluff and rather than just simply taking the trash out, I rebelled like some dumb teen that I was. Fine, I'll leave. If you're going to kick me out for that, don't bother looking for me. I'm done living in this stupid house. I said as I opened the door and slammed it. I walked towards McDonald's to see if any of my friends were there and they weren't. Just the maintenance guy finishing up the cleaning. Of course, of all nights it was raining so I had to find somewhere to go and stay dry. There was a bridge with an overpass a little ways down the street so I started walking towards it. The whole time I'm regretting what I did and I wish that I just took the freaking trash out. I finally get to the bridge and I climbed up the hill to the little section in the corner to stay out of view. I remember in school learning to go here in case of a tornado so I knew it was safe. I patiently and stubbornly waited, assuming that my parents would call the cops which in my mind would show me that they cared. An hour goes by, nothing. No sirens, no cars were even on the road. It was getting pretty cold but I promised myself that I wouldn't give in. I crossed my arms over my legs and just fell asleep. I woke up violently from a semi wailing on his horn over the overpass. I looked all around confused. How long was I out for? I looked towards McDonald's and saw an old man in a grey suit sitting at the bus stop. It was weird he was sitting still facing forward and I assumed it must be like 5am since he was waiting for the bus. I stood up very upset that my parents never tried to find me and began walking to the bus stop. Now I'm a very outgoing person and I trust my gut. As I walked closer to the old guy I didn't get any negative vibes as I approached him. He slowly turned his head and looked at me and smiled. Not a creepy or uncomfortable smile, a genuinely peaceful smile. I smiled back and decided instead of going home maybe I can vent to this guy and just get some advice. I asked if he minded if I sat down. He smiled again and gestured toward the seat. Is everything okay? He said with concern. Yeah, I just ran away from home. My parents don't respect me anymore and how much I do all day. I said. I began telling him the story and I noticed as the time went by that he was becoming more and more anxious and his smile began turning into a frown. He began to start breathing loud and he cut me off, dead sentence, and said, you need to go home, now, with a stern voice. I was confused. I figured maybe his bus was coming soon and he wanted to say that before I left. I looked down in frustration because that's not what I wanted to hear. Suddenly I felt a strong grasp on my arm. He grabbed me and looked me dead in the eyes. His eyes were terrifying at this point, bloodshot and wide and I was shaking in fear, totally thrown off guard by his complete switch and persona. He was literally shaking like he was afraid of something. He kept looking down the street and then back into my eyes. You need to go home, now! He screamed at me. At this point, this guy was starting to scare me so I stood up and nodded and he let go of my arm. Nervously, I started walking back to my house. I figured my mom was already up making coffee so my plan of sneaking back into the house and hiding in the basement was not going to happen. Just to see if she'd be up, I looked at my watch. It was 1.30am. My heart stopped and my throat became dry. Why was the man at the bus stop at 1.30am when the buses aren't running? I turned back towards him to look at him, and he was gone. Now I'm scared, confused and I needed to get home. I used my spare key to get into the house. I opened the door quietly and everyone was asleep. I slowly opened the basement door and made my way downstairs to the storage area in the back. 
I buried myself under bags of clothes so they wouldn't find me. Figured I could get some sleep. The image of that guy kept popping up in my head and I was so freaked out it just didn't make any sense. Just then I heard loud sirens passing by and not just one, multiple bursts of sirens coming every 10 seconds or so. I smiled thinking, I've won. My parents called the police to look for me. My plan worked. And now I'll make them worry until the morning and regret kicking me out. I made myself a little bed and covered myself up to stay hidden and fell asleep. I woke up to hearing my mother sobbing upstairs. I looked outside the little basement window and saw daylight so I figured I'd go upstairs and get my apology. I opened the basement door and walked into the kitchen. My mother was sitting at the dining room table with her head in her arms. She immediately looked up at me and gasped. She stood up and ran over to me and hugged me so tight. I, I thought you were dead. She muffled into my jacket. I slowly pulled away and looked at her confused. Why would you think that? I asked. What she said next sent chills throughout my entire body. She said that last night at around 1.40 a.m., a drunk driver crashed into the bus stop in front of the McDonald's. It was completely destroyed. I started breathing heavy and realized that man saved my life. If he didn't tell me to leave when he did, I would have been sitting there and would have been killed. And so many emotions were running through me I didn't know how to handle it so I just hugged my mother and immediately began to cry. I apologized and realized that I missed the old me. I almost got myself killed for my own stubborn stupidity. I dropped those friends and got into a new crowded school and from that point on any time the trash was full, I just took it out. I don't know who or what was at that bus stop but thank you for saving my life. Whether it was just a lucky coincidence or right place, right time kind of thing. But no matter what, all I know is if it wasn't for him telling me to go home, I would have been sitting on that bench for the rest of the night. This happened last night. I worked late at a retail shop. We close at 5 p.m. except for six weeks during the summer where there are street dances from 7 to 9 right out in front of our place. We're one of the sponsors and we give two $25 gift certificates as prizes for each of the weeks. Since many folks who attend are on vacation here, I like to stay open during the street dance. If someone wins, they can walk 50 feet over to spend their prize even if it's the late night of their trip. Plus, the music is cool. They always have a good band. So after closing and doing the books, I got home at about 10-ish. It's pretty normal. It's just my wife and me, plus the dog and four cats. We tend to go to bed and get up early. It's a rural area. We have neighbors, but we're on a quiet lake, and it was all quiet and dark by the time I rolled in. The wife and I are often sleeping in separate bedrooms because she has trouble getting to sleep, and I do not at all. I trained myself to go to sleep fast decades ago, and it has stayed with me. I can often get to sleep in two or three minutes, and I snore. We both do, but I definitely take the laurels for volume. I have woken myself up with loud snoring more than a few times, so I was unsurprised and unbothered to see a note asking me to sleep in one of the spare bedrooms when I enter the dark and quiet house. Our main bedroom is in the finished basement, and she was there. So I settled into place I usually choose on the upper level. It's a double bed in a small bedroom that also hosts my laptop, the dog's feeding station, and a water fountain for all the pets. I like the flowing water sound. I recently washed this set of bedding and reinstalled it back on this bed instead of changing it out for another set. Just part of the normal household chores, but I know I'm the one who handled it the last several times in a row. It's pretty fresh, and has been used three nights since then. About 4 a.m. or so, by my estimate, I woke up feeling something odd and blocky on the edge of the bed nearest the wall, away from me. And it wasn't just something loose. It was a hard, squared-off lump underneath the sheet. Not very small, bigger than my hand, just a little. A really weird thing to feel at that time, in that place. I told myself it was a weird dream and just went to sleep. I woke up at my normal time of 6 a.m., feeling a bit groggy, I felt over to the side of the bed where the blocky object had been, and it was still there. I pulled to the sheet and was able to remove it. It was a piece of 2x4, 6 or 7 inches long, 
really, really odd. Convinced I was clearly still dreaming, I rolled over and went back to sleep, and I woke up at about 6.30 feeling a bit closer to normal. I got up, had coffee, breakfast, did chores, tended critters and plants, and headed off to the shop. I got in this evening at about 6, watched Prey on Hulu with the wife, agreed to sleep in the same places, ate dinner, did normal evening at home stuff, came into the room and began disrobing for bed. Sitting on the cedar chest across from the bed is a 6-7 to seven inch piece of 2x4. We haven't had any chunks of 2x4 sitting around this place in 6 years since I finished the basement. I burned all the leftovers in a fire pit by the lake years ago. There have been no visitors. There was no lumber stored here, period, scrap or otherwise. I'm stumped as to how this piece of wood appeared where and when it did. It's enough out of place as to have me thinking I dreamed it when I encountered it first. I don't have any known enemies, and it's not like waking up to a horse head in bed, but what's the message to a piece of wood? It's just a bit of wood. Yet I am a bit creeped out to how it could have got where it is. Are the trees sending me a message? Anyone know? Hey friends, thanks for listening. Click that notification bell to be alerted of all future narrations. I release new videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 7pm EST. And there are super fun live streams every Sunday, Tuesday, and Thursday night. I'd love to see you there. If you got a story, be sure to submit them to my subreddit r slash letsreadofficial or over email at letsreadsubmissions at gmail.com and you might even hear your story featured on the next video. And if you want to support me even more, grab early access to all future narrations and bonus content over on Patreon, or click that big join button to hear about the extra perks offered for the channel. And check out the Let's Read podcast where you can hear all of these stories in big compilations and save huge on data, located anywhere you listen to podcasts. Links in the description below. Thanks so much, friends. And be sure to check your bed for wood. <laughs>